I'm working as a data scientist around uh, uh, three years now, and um, and um, uh, data visualization is is uh, one of the the uh, main driver uh, of of my job. And uh, uh, basically, it's not my focus of the um, not the focus of my job, but it's a really important part. So so um, I hope it will be interesting. I, I, I really hope that I found an, an interesting topic for you. And, um, and um, let's see how you like it. <laughs> so uh, can I start? All right, then I, I share my screen and let's jump in. Yeah, first I would like to to um, show a brief presentation with some slide um, about data visualization. Uh, why is it um, useful? Why is it, uh, um, sorry, okay, now, now yes, thanks. <laughs> you can see it, right? Okay, so um, first I would like to speak about what, what is it uh, in, in term uh, as a data scientist, you see that uh, it's it's um, um, somehow to transfer the the uh, bulk uh, data, bulk test data into some visual context, uh, because our brain understands more easily the the pictures uh, than um, than tabular data, like bunch of text in a in a table and and uh, um, we cannot easily read that we, we we need to have some some pictures to see that that uh, um, instead of a lot of text um, so why is it useful and one of this um, is connected for the previous but the, yes so to make the the um, the result of, of the analytics like what we can take out of the data uh, more understandable for the likes or for the for the persons who not uh, uh, who does not have um, analytics background, and also to channel the information because uh, the data can uh, contains a lot of a range of information, and some of the time we don't need the whole uh, bunch of information from it, just a part, and we can channel it down to one. Uh, tunnel of, of information. Also to create attention, because if, if I just show you text and, and uh, uh, raw data, um, most of the people getting sleepy after a, after a few minutes. So, and as I said, that this is how our brain works. Um, <clears throat> um, let's speak a little bit about uh, uh, the analytics. How is it built up? What is the, the hierarchy? Um, uh, descriptive analytics is a, um, is the first. Uh, sorry for the order. I, I I just realized that it's I messed up the order, but so yeah, the first usually the descriptive analytics is what what is the the um, the first driver of the of the analytics, and basically it tells you from the history data which has happened in the past that what is really happened in the past. A subset of uh, descriptive analytics is the diagnostic call analytics, which helps you understand that in the past, why is it happened? Like wh what we know some, some targets, what we want to know in the data, we can analyze it. Uh, what is the root cause of that uh, um, um, target? And the predictive analytics. Uh, this is this is what my uh, my uh, main field is. Uh, that we we want to know something which is already not happened. So we we need to um, uh, have some methods to predict the future value of a, of a um, certain uh, target. And the subset of this predictive analytics is the prescriptive analytics. When we uh, do the same the diagnostic analytics, but in the future, uh, with the future prediction. And we want to tell that why it will happen. What is the root cause of the future event? I would like to, I would like to uh, in the meantime, um, um, 
emphasize that you can ask me anytime. Anytime you see that there is there is something is not uh, not so clear or or I'm I'm speaking too fast or or too slow or something, just tell me and 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 we can we can uh, uh, walk it through again. Let's see some uh, type of visualization. Um, tell me if you can see whether you can see the graphs um, mostly this is just a summary what kind of plots are are there uh, not of course not all of them but uh, but a, a, a few of them few um, more more um, um, important let's see a little bit more detailed uh, i collected the the most relevant one uh, also for our our workshop and uh, and some with some few words about it. Um, I don't know why I cannot. Sorry, I, I can't uh, make the the uh, my desktop disappear. Um, but maybe you 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 are not even seeing it. Um, we we see it, but it's not really a problem. I mean, it's not okay. Thanks. All right. Okay. 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 So uh, first, I would like to speak about the histogram, which which is a very useful analytics, uh, useful uh, visualization in analytics, um, quite easy graph and uh, tells it more. Um, in the x-axis, uh, as you see, there is a um, normally a time um, frequency um, data time range. For example, from 2017 to 2020, and on the on the um, x, uh, I'm sorry, on the y-axis is usually a value, which is mostly the uh, value of the the that particular feature or column in our data set. Uh, they used to check uh, the the probability of the distribution, uh, and um, and every information about the distribution of, of uh, uh, one-dimensional um, data. It's a one line of numbers, and, and we see what is the distribution in time of that uh, value. The next one is the scatter plot. It's uh, basically a bunch of dots in a coordinate system. And uh, this, is, this is the, the uh, sorry, and this is the, the uh, most used um, uh, visualization technique also in mathematics when we when we uh, studied the the coordinate geometrics and we know that how to visualize functions and and uh, so on and basically the scatter pot uh, uh, um, um, purpose to visualize a correlation between two uh, variables uh, which one is on the x-axis, the other is on the y-axis. These relationships are uh, could be um, 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 positive and negative, negative and positive correlation. If uh, it's positive correlation, um, the more the x values are, the more the y values. And the negative correlation is, is the opposite, that the more is the, the x-axis, uh, the less the y-axis, or um, vice versa. Mm -hmm. uh, if there is, a, yes, I, I, want to, I want to show that if there is no correlation, then um, our, our um, uh, scatter plot looks like something where you cannot realize a line in the in the uh, dot structure. Heat map, this is an easy uh, graph which usually contains a matrix-like uh, object and, and the range of values distributed with different colors. Um, it, it's useful if you, if you want to visualize your data and you don't want to see the, just the text, just to how is it looks like, I will show you some example in, a work, in, in the workshop, I mean, in the notebook. Um, and the last one is the, the line graph. This I'm sure that you are aware of. Uh, this is um, one-dimensional uh, data visualization technique 
uh, where also on the x-axis we can see the time mostly the time uh, range for example if we think about the stock market or any investment line the first stereotype is getting our head is that that uh, graph uh, usually they they can visualize revenue uh, price value or any kind of of uh, numerical one dimensional data on it um, and let's jump into the notebook then. Um, I would like to have a question. Uh, who is uh, from you that, that uh, um, can or, or uh, would like to um, uh, program in Python for this, uh, uh, in the sake of this um, uh, workshop? Does anybody has uh, installed Python um, environment in their computer? Just because if somebody has, I can I can share the notebook, and uh, and he can um, uh, walk through with me. But it's it's uh, totally optional. I I will share the notebook after the after the work, work, workshop. Anybody wants to try it after, um, uh, feel free. And so I would Adina, like to. Adina, sorry, Adina has. Uh, she signed that she has the Python. Ah, okay. I, mean, I have worked with this Jupyter notebook so far, so I'm happy if you share it, then I can just check it afterwards too. Okay, so uh, should I share it now? And uh, and you you no, work it's with. it's fine. Uh, if you share it after the workshop and uh, later on, I can also take a look myself. Thanks. Perfect, perfect. It's it's uh, it's commented in mostly like what is the structure. Um, so I would like to speak a little bit about the, the um, small dummy project I, I take for this occasion. And this basically uh, called the red wine quality uh, prediction and analytics. The, um, the purpose of that data set is that we have in the column list, a bunch of uh, chemical and uh, and physical uh, properties of the red wine. For example, uh, acidity, um, sugar, chlorides, um, density, pH, sulfates, and the level of the alcohol. And on the target value, we have a so-called quality uh, target. Uh, which is tells us that our um, uh, wine, what is our wine quality? Basically, I summarized it. Uh, what does the, the numbers means In the target uh, column, we have uh, six different values, which can be, can be associated with this kind of uh, wine um, properties, like really bad, bad, middle, good, outstanding price winner and our purpose is to to have a, a model and have a knowledge about if we have an unqualified wine and we know the uh, chemical uh, features of that wine um, can we predict or can we not that that what will be that uh, wine uh, quality and let's see. So first, I would like to to show what I uh, I would like to refer back to my to my uh, uh, presentation where where we spoke about the the descriptive analytics. Uh, and let's see some descriptive analytics uh, on this data set, and uh, see for example why is the heat map could be useful. Mostly our first first. Uh, uh, us to do is to check whether our, our data has uh, uh, missing values or not. In this case, our heat map uh, has just two values, or missing or, uh, or not missing. The not missing is the black, and the missing is the white. So as we see, there is no missing data in our data set. But I replicated a situation. What if we would have missing data? How would it look like in the, in the real life? Uh, so the, the white color shows that these are the, the cases where our uh, data has missing value and the red where is now. The missing value is something which we, we uh, need to 
we need to consider as a as a um, disadvantage in our data. So we need to somehow handle these uh, missing values because it contains no information. After the next uh, plot, uh, let me show the the line plot. How is it? looks like in, a, in our case. I uh, visualize um, a line plot from every uh, column we have. And uh, basically the meaning of that, the why is it useful, is because we can uh, check uh, our outliers from our uh, columns. So for example, we can see that if, if fixed uh, acidity has mostly the the, the values on the range of uh, 13 and uh, 5. And there are some values, which is, we called it outliers, where it happens just once in the, the uh, bunch of uh, situation. These, these plots are, are mainly useful to, to have an information, whether we have outlier or not because these outliers need to be considered to, in order to make a, a fine um, analytics. The next plot I want to show, sorry, is the, the histogram, which we talked about before, where we check the distribution of our, our, our columns and our target. Uh, we can see we, uh, somehow in the analytics, the most, uh, most, um, um, uh, op optimal uh, um, solution if we can uh, somehow fit a distribution function on our uh, data, which function already defined, normal distribution, gamma distribution, logarithmic distribution, so on. I, I don't want to uh, uh, make you sleep about this distribution. I'm sure that you have uh, bad memories in the statistic uh, classes about this topic, but the, our main uh, um, target with that plot to somehow see a, a pattern, which is already defined. So we know the, the values of that uh, function. So we can easily predict based on that distribution that what will be in the future. And also uh, this can be done with, with um, all of the function. And we can see that some of the function distribution are quite uh, unrecognizable. We, we cannot build a pattern on it. We cannot, we cannot really fit any function on it. So uh, there are some, some techniques to, to to transform our distribution to a, to a different, more useful distribution. This, for example, the logarithmic normalization or a, a bunch of type of, uh, of normalization techniques. And um, after the distribution plot, uh, sorry, at the end of the distribution plot, we see the, the uh, distribution of our, our target uh, value, the quality. We can see that that the distribution is is um, um, almost normal. So from the middle uh, quality uh, wine, we have the most quantity. So this is what we can usually uh, experience also in the supermarket. That mostly the the uh, the most of the wine. Uh, in the in the stores are between 1,000 uh, uh, foreign in in um, uh, or or in euro three euro and uh, between um, uh, sorry five euro and and uh, ten euro. This is in Hungary the range of the middle wine, basically. And we can see that there is a less amount of really bad wines and, and less, a really less amount of uh, really, really good wine. Um, this is the same um, purpose, this so-called count plot, which uh, do the same. It's counting the different values of the, of the uh, column and uh, separate the different values with, uh, with colors. Uh, associate a, a color for that value. 
but as you see that this distribution plot is the same as the count plot but a little bit more fancy the count plot okay we can we can see this is the 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 part of first part of the descriptive analytics to have a first knowledge first assumption from our data um which we cannot done with uh, just to go to the to the raw data and uh, so I go to the raw data and we just see the bunch of numbers. We, we cannot see basically anything from it. But if we visualize it with, with this kind of plots, we can have a, a initial assumption from our data. The, the next uh, part is the so-called diagnostic analytics, where we want to see the co connections between the, the different uh, features, the connection of the feature with the uh, quality, in our case, with the target value. This is the most important because this can tell us that uh, what are the, the, uh, the most relevant uh, gears, the most relevant indicators of how, why our wine will be good. Because anybody who wants to, uh, wants to be a successful, um, um, uh, has a successful winery, surely they need to uh, target the, the um, more high quality of wine. Of course, the highest quality are really hardly uh, reachable because you, can, you need to have different, uh, mu much more different uh, uh, attributes and indicators for it. For example, as, as an example, uh, when I went to uh, Bordeaux with my girlfriend, uh, we, we, um, we uh, visited uh, so-called saint Emilion um, winery, where, which is the, the most expensive, most uh, quality uh, wine in Bordeaux, even in Bordeaux, the most, most uh, high rank. And they are not even using any any automation, no machines. Everybody with their hands checking based on pictures that what are the perfect berry, uh, uh, grape berries. So so this indicates different kind of production, less amount of uh, supply, but the quality will rise much more. So. In our case, we have limited uh, attributes, limited indicators in our data set where we can uh, count on. So let's see the first uh, thing which I want to show. This is a, a so-called pair plot. Uh, it's a matrix-like uh, visualization uh, plot where, where uh, in the diagonal of the matrix, you can see the distribution of the different uh, uh, um, attributes and on the on the uh, other values of the matrix the other uh, position of the matrix we can see the scatter plot from the uh, from the different uh, 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 column combination with each other so if if i a little bit go uh, closer you can see that as in the in the uh, in the presentation we, we indicated we need to see connections like this. If we have a connection like this, we can fit a line on the, on the uh, third plot, that it means that there is some sort of uh, connection between that uh, uh, two variable. So from on my eye, it easily can be targeted that this is somehow a thing like, like can be useful. For example, this is just a, just a vertical line. This most mostly it, it won't be so much correlated and also if we go a little bit uh, further we can see more more uh, uh, um, connections in our data you can see also a negative connection here here also a positive connection and this kind of um, um, correlation um, analysis has another form, which we already saw the heat map. We create a so-called correlation matrix from our data set. Basically, the, all of the combination of the columns of our, of our uh, data. And uh, the correlation value 
is uh, between zero and one. One, uh, sorry, zero and minus, no, minus one and one. So um, uh, one is the, the highest positive correlation value and minus one is the highest negative correlation value and if we see some some uh, more red or more more dark color in our heat map the dark color indicates that there is high correlation as we see that this is the third one and these two uh, the fixed acidity and the ph value has high correlation this as we remember the chemistry uh, lecture this is this is quite uh, easily understandable because ph correlates with acidity or uh, basicity um, so if we check back in our in our uh, scatter plot we can see that yes hop this was the, the this was this two um, two plots two columns the ph and the acidity as we know how high is the pH, less acidic our, our uh, uh, component is. That's why we can indicate a negative correlation. And uh, this is what is exactly happening. pH has a negative correlation, minus 68, which is a higher number. It's considered as a high number in correlation. Why is it useful? We, we want to know every correlation in our data, uh, not just with our target value, but we want to know whether uh, two columns in our data correlate really much. This is, uh, uh, um, this is really, really important because if we indicate so much um, uh, columns into the model, which are correlate with each other, we can overlap lap our information and our model will be less accurate. That's why we need to take out or reduce the dimensionality of these cases where the columns are correlated. But our most important um, 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 purpose with that is that see which um, column has the, the biggest importance biggest indication um, um, possibility for the quality. And this will be tell by the, this last line of, uh, of the heat map. This is tells you that the columns are how correlated with the quality. And this is what we can a little bit more further visualize. And if we go, go more in the, in the notebook, we can see that, uh, uh, sorry, I, I need to run this because I think I forgot to real time run the, plots and uh, now we want to see that how the different columns are correlate with our target value which is the quality. Uh, we see that these are the, the um, this is the so-called bar plot, which basically have uh, on the X dimension, we listed all the columns of our uh, data set. And on the Y axis, we listed the correlation value we see that the quality with the quality has one uh, correlation value, which means that it's the same. And uh, this is what we can see also on the plot. In this plot, we consider the negative values also, that uh, uh, which correlates uh, in the oppositely, which correlates uh, positively. But at the end of the day, when we want to know which is the most important feature, it basically does not matter because the absolute value of the uh, correlation is the most important. So I visualize that also. This is how it looks like. And from this plot, we can build up a, a sorting, a ranking, that what is our uh, most correlated value. This I will do also. A rank to, to see which is the, the biggest. Um, sexes. Oh. 
if I should have done in another data set, I'm, I'm not uh, bothering with that uh, in this moment. But we can we can easily by eye uh, rank up, uh, do a ranking uh, from our from our um, uh, attributes. Uh, we see that the the most important indicator is the alcohol level uh, in our wine, and the the uh, less is the residual sugar, and also the pH is not that much important, but we see that the, the uh, acidity is, is really important, but we can also see that the acidity is negatively important. So less acidic our wine, the more the people like it, more our quality will be good. So basically this is the descriptive analytics with diagnostical analytics, we we see our the the prob uh, the probability. No, sorry, our um, 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 our um, we see okay. that the first implication from our data, and uh, we can provide some explanation that why could this happen in our data? Why is the quality events, how can it map to the, uh, in theoretically, how can it be mapped with the different columns? And now if we are through that, uh, uh, see the main purpose of, the, of this analytics to uh, jump to the predictive analytics, which we tell from an unknown why, we don't have classification from it. We don't have anything. We have just the acidity level, the, the sugar level, the pH, the sulfates, the alcohol level. And we want to know how much we can sell this wine because this is the more important, how to, how to be categorized our wine. And for this, we can build up a so-called machine learning uh, algorithm, which is basically the, the uh, in the, in the, uh, Today, we call this AI. Uh, basically, it's, it's morely a, a, a buzzword. AI is, is nothing else, just a, a something algorithm which does that. You pu put in the data, tells it that uh, uh, do a so-called regression. And based on this regression, somehow predict the future value. This is what is today called AI. And um, sorry for sorry? interruption. Yes? There was a question from Marta. Uh, ah, is sorry. There, no worries. I'm here for helping. Is there a basic formula for calculating the quality parameter based on the others? This is the question. Uh, so yeah, this this is the thing. So uh, the quality value are uh, an individual value which is uh, classified by um, word, wordly um, um, accredited uh, companies. Like, for example, the French wine classification, they have a really strict uh, way how to classify their wines. They are not classified, uh, they consider this kind of levels when they classify uh, when they classify the wines, but mostly they use different kind of methods. For example, tasting, um, um, smelling, and and every kind of sommelier uh, um, expertise to define this quality range. In our data set, there is a no calculation to do it. This is our model for to uh, to do this calculation for us to somehow predict that. From these uh, um, columns, we have the values of the, uh, the alcohol, pH, and sulfates, what will be our quality. And this is not a static mathematical uh, calculation. This is, um, this, is, this is an analytics to, to find out what will be the, the quality. Uh, did I answer your question well? All right, I, I yes, didn't say yes, <laughs> okay. yes. <laughs> Thank yes. you, thank you. So uh, let's see in our first uh, um, uh, scenario, we do a so-called regression. The regression basically means that 
that uh, we have a range of numbers from three till eight. And these numbers can be anything between three and eight. In our case, it's not totally true because our uh, quality values can be just, uh, um, just um, um, full numbers, I mean, integers and uh, not float. So cannot be, for example, 3.5 or, or 4.28. It can be just three, four, five, six, seven, eight. This is not a basic uh, a regression scenario, but this is the e easy, more understandable solution first. And the other solution is the so-called classification. When we have uh, also the same three till eight, but we decide that let's have a threshold. Put a line here and everything uh, in a negative from that threshold will be bad. And anything higher than the threshold will be good. And this is an easier way to, uh, the classification is a most, most easy target we can, we can choose. Binary classification, basically we, we, um, we reduce the level of, uh, of the complexity of our, of our uh, data with that, we reduce the information uh, from our data to divide it to two different groups. This is how it's easy to handle. For example, this is what we saw in the, the elections, that how easy to handle people when it's uh, bigger groups, sm uh, smaller quantity, bigger groups than uh, smaller uh, uh, groups, but high quantity. We will see that our, uh, uh, our model can, uh, in a, so some kind of accuracy, it can predict that uh, what will be the, the, our quality of our wine. So after we, we, um, we did our models, this model I just did just to see the visualization after from the, the uh, results and the explanation of our uh, results. And, and uh, I don't want to go really uh, in details that, that uh, um, what, how is the regression works, how is the, the, uh, the machine learning techniques work. If we have time, at the end, I can speak about it also a little bit more deeply, but this is totally optional. Yes, sorry. Uh, I sorry you. There was a <laughs> hand raising. Sorry. So um, let's see that uh, what can be visualized in the predictive analytics uh, based on our models. We have a, a model build up from our data. And this model is predict in a so-called so decision tree uh, methods. And these decision trees are uh, uh, quite of a bad, bad black box from outside. We don't exactly know what can happen with it till we are not visualized. And uh, if we visualize the tree is much more understandable. It's also understandable more in an expert Level, but we can somehow indicate that, okay, it's yes, quality will be uh, bigger. If it's no, the quality will be less. And how the different uh, uh, attributes like sulfates, volatile acidity uh, uh, influence the, the decision of our model. Um, and after, I would like to show a so-called shapely values of our data, uh, which is the... the uh, most today most advanced advanced explanation uh, techniques to explain why it's happened what it's happened why is the our uh, wine had this quality and if we know that we can assume that if we change these values we can reach a more wine and uh, in our cases we divided our data set to do different partition. 
one will be called the train and the other called the test. So we have the full of the data and we say that, okay, this will be our training data set. So we reduce our data and use this to train our models, to input the data in our model. And based on the training of this, like we have a, a bunch of attributes on the left side, for example, the alcohol, the, uh, the pH, and we have one target in, in this side. And if the attributes was this, the outcome of the quality is happen this. And the algorithm train this information and try to simulate and predict what will happen in our test data, which is already in this case is a happen scenario, but we replicate a situation where uh, we don't have this part of the data. So the model doesn't know this data, but we're trying to predict and after uh, check how accurate is our prediction. So we use this part of the data to, to visualize that how good our model is. I know I a little bit more went to, to the, the details now. So I, I wait a little bit to whether somebody has a question or I can explain a little bit more if it's not totally clear, but tell me whether it's clear or not. All right, so I, I think I can, I can uh, go on. Um, okay. So in this plot, in this uh, visualization plot graph, we can see uh, this is a more advanced uh, uh, visualization techniques. And it's explained that what we need to change uh, in our chemical component to rise more quality. The red uh, color is, shows that, um, that if the, the uh, color is red, we push the quality our wine up. If the, uh, the color is uh, blue, we put in the negative way, so, so our wine will be less good. In this case, we see that uh, um, the alcohol, it's the wine, is, wine quality is better if the alcohol level is higher, but we also know that less amount of higher alcohol uh, is available than how uh, small alcohol level wines are. This is the density of, of, the, of the attributes. This we can see that it's more dense, more, uh, more wine, uh, happens with with um, uh, low alcohol level, but still the wine is better uh, if, in this case, if the alcohol is bigger. This uh, not just because we know that the ethyl alcohol level of our of our wine is high, that it means that the quality will be good. No, usually the, the good quality wines has uh, different approaches to rise more higher alcohol level. And these approaches makes the wine more, uh, more um, 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 good. And I don't exactly know how this kind of, uh, of um, um, processes are working in the, in the wine industry. I'm not an expert, but but I can assume that this can be the behind this. And also we can see that uh, the same relationship with the sulfates, more the sulfates are big. The, uh, for example, sulfates like uh, tannine, uh, tannine level in the red wine, these, these are an indicator which, which you can feel the tannine. It means that usually it's a, it's a, it's a good wine. Also the, um, the, um, um, the, yeah, oh, we can see that acidity, it's the quality is less good if the acidity is high, as we also implicated from the correlation uh, matrix at the beginning. We can see also this uh, in the term of our model decisions that yes, 
it's decided to reduce the the uh, quality if the acidity will, was was bigger and that's why it could reach uh, higher accuracy and also this uh, this we can uh, done it can be done with the future prediction also so this this was uh, visualized on the already trained data set why is the training decision uh, happened and uh, uh, what kind of indicators this uh, uh, influenced our model decision yes there is a question from edina or maybe you can speak up edina and i don't need to read up <laughs> in, uh, instead of you if you can Yes, uh, thank you. Um, other than uh, this question, uh, not necessarily to Benza, but to the to the colleagues. Maybe after the presentation, we can think about it uh, together. So I was wondering, um, how much is it uh, realistic to transfer such uh, things to the children? Because if you are now uh, here as teacher, so I'm personally a software developer and very much interested in this area. But um, thinking about my children in the class, I am teaching. So far, we have started with basic uh, bar plots. Like we asked a question from them, they answered on Mentimeter, and we collected the data and looked at it together. So that was quite fun, and I like to raise the children's attention to this. But I'm wondering, um, what is the level from the advanced data science uh, libraries of Python that we can Mm -hmm. um, show them not to lose their interest. And I am asking rather the colleagues here who are teaching older students, uh, what's their experience? So maybe not right now, but just think about it. I didn't want to interrupt you, Ben, so I- No, 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 no. I, I, I was just, I was just uh, waiting uh, whether uh, one of the colleagues are, are uh, reply to that. But if not, I, I have an answer maybe uh, mm -hmm. could help. Um, so in the children's, you, you know that the first thing is the attention because mm -hmm. this is the, the most uh, volatile for them. And that's why the, the uh, crucial part is to find a topic which they like about it. Mm -hmm. So for example, I, take, I choose the, the wine, uh, the red wine selection because I know we are adult, most of the people likes uh, red wine or some kind of wine and this is something which catch the interest this can be found also for the children to find some topics uh, based on you can uh, you can explain to them the usefulness of uh, some sort of plots like mm -hmm. bar plots distribution plots this this kind mm -hmm. of things and uh, regarding the python libraries I would suggest you the, the I really like this uh, this uh, library called Seymour. I think you already uh, know about it. This is just this mm -hmm. name is Seaborn. You can install it just like uh, pip install Seaborn, and Seaborn has a lot of different kind of uh, of um, uh, plots in it. Uh, which I can I can show you through like box plot, different kind of blocks, box plot, categoric plot, bar plot, mm -hmm. uh, uh, cat plot, uh, uh, cluster map, a uh, chorus palette, canyon plot. It can be also like geographical plots like maps or or some sort mm -hmm. distribution plot. And a lot of kind of different uh, 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 mm -hmm. plot type. Mm -hmm. Which you can also find if you if you write Seaborn in the in the Google and mm -hmm. and the Seaborn will will set up their their own library page. And, and then there... sorry for interrupting. Are you also um, showing that or teaching such things to children? Maybe in your free time. So you said you are a data scientist at a company. Mm -hmm. um, have you experienced um, their reaction, their interest on that, um, or? Do you have some experience in this area too? Yes, uh, I mean, uh, not mm -hmm. not basically uh, connected with the uh, teaching, uh, mm -hmm. more uh, because of my little brother. Uh -huh. uh, they they are interesting in um, mostly if I tell AI. So mm -hmm. uh, for them, it's it's more uh, interesting if I if I uh, drive 
that buzzword uh, terminology that oh my god ai uh, how the robots are working and how to how to to make it a little bit more uh, uh, sci-fi-ish uh, for them and this this really easily can catch their attention mm -hmm. uh, based on this topic and from that you can drive back so okay that imagine that the, the robots are are uh, working like this they also doing analytics in their heads mm -hmm. and uh, plotting the different uh, kind of data in their hand head and decide so there uh, the robots decision could be really similar to this uh, plot which i show here uh -huh. uh, so, so oh, oh, what happened? So the if we 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 would we would visualize in a in a AI movie the decision of the I don't know the Will Smith movie the I, I robot the what is the decision of a, of a, a normal uh, AI robot something it could be this more uh, complicated and more black box and everything but something could be visualized by this and uh, so this would be my idea this is what mm -hmm. it's worked for for me with with the uh, with the young youngsters and uh, and uh, this is really about the 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 uh, topic domain you choose to explain the, sure. the stuff that's also um, the basic decision which topic to show yeah Mm. Okay, thanks for uh, May I ask you once more about the last picture, this graph? Which one? This? No, no, no. Previous. This one. This one, yes. What yeah. it was? Uh, so this tells you that your model, which is a decision tree model, is, uh, let me show you on a whiteboard. So we have a... a So we have a, a model which is works like uh, it's building up decision trees. Yes, no. Yes, after yes and no. After yes and no. And this is, is building up a lot of tree like that and, and build up uh, 500 different combination of, of these uh, trees. So these trees are uh, built up that it select a partition of our full data with a partition of our columns. So if we have, uh, um, so I, I need to open the data again to see that uh, DF line. So if maybe are at the first tree, the algorithm is select these five uh, uh, attributes and based on this select uh, built up a lot of trees like we show uh, like we show here a lot of trees with selecting different uh, kind of attribution set in every tree it select 500 tree with different combination of the columns in our data and after check it that how accurate is his decision and based on the this uh, checking always iterate it again and again like a for loop and check which is more accurate and select the best decision and after this decision will be visualized here in the in this uh, plot this was the best decision what the algorithm selected that okay in our brain in our, in my brain uh, this is the most probable that this will be the best solution and this is why it selects the best tree and gives you the result of that best tree this is how uh, briefly the the decision tree algorithms are working there are different kind of uh, of um, um, of uh, solution for that uh, uh, decision tree algorithms, there is more simple. Uh, there is there is a less uh, um, uh, uh, simple, more complicated one. And after this is the basic uh, um, idea of the deep learning, which is the AI um, uh, algorithms. But the difference is that in the AI, instead of trees, we built up. Uh, different kind of 
so-called artificial neurons and make uh, connections between these neurons, like in our brain, our neurons are connected with neurons. A lot of, lot of connection is happening in that layer. And after we send it through this architecture, <clears throat> our data, like the Y prediction, and we get it's some calculation is happening. So some functions and, and calculation something. And, and after we have, a, uh, we have a result. This is basically what is really happening in here. It's, it's called black box because they don't really know that what is that calculation which really uh, resulted that uh, end value. But we can have some, some uh, graphs like, uh, like we see here that a little bit explain that black box. That's why is that plot are useful. Um, have I answered the question? Yes, thank you. Can I have a question, an invitation for everybody? Can you uh, click on the board? You you have your own drawings, please. Yes. Uh, it's, so it's a question for everybody. Maybe it's a short brainstorm. What do you think? How would you use these? Uh, this Asian tree this, and this neuron thing with the children. Do you have any idea how would you implement or adapt for your, into your practice? Anything that just come to your mind? Any ideas? You can say it and you can put it into the chat. Uh, in Hungarian, we can try to translate if it's hard in English. So it's for everybody. Even if, if it's later, you got some ideas, just, just collect it uh, and, and you, can, you can send it into the chat and, and we can, at the end of the workshop, mm -hmm. we can uh, discuss it. Uh -huh. Lenka told us that human geography. Mm -hmm. What else? Really just popping into, it's like a brainstorm. There's no goods and bads. Mm -hmm. Okay, and maybe Bante, do you have any suggestion mm -hmm. for this? Yeah, uh, so thanks. There are also if if we if we speak about uh, uh, if if we speak about uh, so so yes, yeah, so, thank you. So uh, if we speak about uh, this kind of neuron connections then uh, maybe a good example could be uh, some kind of healthcare uh, topic. Like, I don't know if the children are more, more uh, raised up, they have some knowledge about cancer or something. Everybody is afraid of that, that kind of topic or uh, maybe even uh, COVID-19 uh, can be an interesting topic. And there are different kind of health uh, 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 probably uh, so health uh, um, um, attributes of our of the human like which is the the body signals from uh, from our body so the signals from our body have a different kind of attributes like for the wine the acidity the ph something like i don't know heartbeat uh, 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 blood uh, pressure, this kind of attributes in our body can implicate in some kind of disease. And there is a, a really, really uh, famous um, prediction also, which they use uh, this kind of algorithms to predict, to predict whether a patient is uh, more probable to have cancer or not. So this this topic could be even interesting for for our children if you if you tell it uh, uh, more in a simple way, and also the the uh, the COVID uh, uh, nineteen serums today are using this kind of deep learning uh, solutions to somehow predict the DNA line the DNA structure. Of a, of a virus, of a protein, 
And based on the historical DNA uh, line, they build up a model on that uh, old past structure of that uh, protein, or, or sorry, or of that virus. And after they can predict that what could be the mutation of the next, I don't know, half year. And this is helps them to find out what could be the range, a smaller range for our vaccines in the future. So the vaccine is problematic because usually the vaccines are, are done for that virus, which is happening. And if the virus has some little modification, the vaccine can be unuseful. But with this, with this um, 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 approach, they can somehow filter down uh, this range where they need to think about it, what could be the, the good vaccine for it. Maybe this example is less for children because if, if in high school, maybe when, when they already uh, uh, learn the, the protein structures, RNA virus, DNA virus, this kind of things, uh, there could be useful to tell about this story that, that uh, look, this is an interesting how they are predicting the COVID-19 uh, serum uh, um, cover of the mutations. <laughs> and also geographic could be an, another example. Uh, this is also a um, so-called machine learning uh, approach when, when uh, it's called the clustering. Then uh, you have different kind of clusters which you make from the data uh, based on mathematical uh, uh, solution. So you have a, a bunch of numbers and you basically categorize them into different boxes, the different data points based on the mathematical distance from each other. The different data points has different mathematical distances it's called the Euclid, Euclid's uh, distance matrix, for example. And based on this, it separates the different dots to, uh, to different so-called clusters. And in the, in the society studies of the geographic, it could be really useful how to categorize different kind of, uh, of uh, 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 economical uh, uh, effects in the world, like, like uh, like uh, uh, I don't know the the uh, U.S. governmental uh, uh, supply or GDP can be categorized in in different kind of uh, industry industrial uh, uh, distances between each other, or the people of the U.S. election can be categorized by based on this kind of uh, of uh, of solutions based on the the different kind of geographical location of the people is there living in urbanist uh, culture it, they are living in the countryside uh, based on this kind of uh, of uh, of attributes they can categorize your people uh, your uh, the us uh, population to most probably who they will elect, or or uh, how much they will uh, buy different kind of products. Who will be the one who buy the most amount of Coca Cola in in the the U.S. And they're using this kind of geographical attributes to to find this. Or another good geographical solution when when you have uh, uh, you are you you have interest in in real estate, uh, real estate uh, uh, situation and you have a lot of house and you need to, to uh, sell houses. So you need to have a price level for that house. And you know that the geographical uh, 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 prob um, uh, sorry, I need, I need to check this word because it, the, the three times I didn't know what is the uh, uh, Profit, 
property. Thank property you. Feature. Property. Yes. Mm -hmm. So the different kind of <laughs> thank you, thank you very much. Different kind of property of the of the uh, of the houses has the uh, uh, geographical uh, dependencies has I don't know room size dependencies. So you know that the neighborhood in the Bronx is not so good then morely more uh, use uh, more more uh, usual that your prices will be less high but if you are in the beverly hills your prices will be more high and this is totally geographical dependencies and this kind of models can easily recognize this kind of patterns is 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 it it was it a good good uh, example for example can it can it be um, can it be transferred to to the to the age of the children you 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 are working with? Tell me if it's not. <laughs> All right. Um, then let let's go. Yeah. Okay. So uh, this this we we already went through the the explanation. This is the this when we explain what will happen in our in our future and why it will happen. This root cause. This is called the prescriptive prescriptive analytics. This is the most important. For example, in our company also. So even you have a good prediction. Uh, for the company and they making a lot of money from it they want to know the what they really want to know that why will it happen what we need to change to uh, to uh, make it not happen so to avoid the failure what we need to change in our machine to the failure not happen this is why the explainability is a really really important uh, uh, factor and uh, and mostly valuable for for the companies and um, um, this is the the basic uh, uh, purpose of this kind of plots after if you show it to the business that look if uh, your wine will contain uh, um, less sulfates uh, then you will you will uh, have less good quality wine or if the ph will be will be, uh, uh, sorry, the acidity will be too high, then your wine will be not good. So, so you need to change on that to, to uh, earn more income, which is your purpose. After these are some uh, line plots and histograms of our predictions. What are model predicted? Uh, these are the prediction values. If you see now, this is a range of numbers. So it can be not just three, for uh, 4.5, it's, it could be much more range of values, which is could be also useful because maybe a wine quality not, cannot be just uh, uh, determined in, in five uh, different uh, quality uh, class, but, but it's more useful as a range of, of values for the, uh, for the wineries. And after I replicated the, the situation which we speak about it, this is a so-called classification when I divided our, my uh, target values to two different uh, values, good or bad. So this is an easy solution. And uh, let's predict that with a random um, set of features, uh, uh, we have a new wine. And we put into the data one line of, of wine. So every line in our data shows a different kind of wine. So for example, this wine is the uh, Danku. This is the uh, saint Amelion, or sorry, the most high qualities usually, but, but whatever. So the different kind of wines are different kind of lines in our data. So if we put a new uh, wine in our data, which has a missing quality value, because we don't know the quality yet. We just made this wine, but we want to know what will be the quality. So this is missing, but every attributes we have, we put it into the model and with it instantly tells you it will be good or bad. So this is the classification. And uh, as you see in this plot, this is a heat map. This is the accuracy of our models. 
the uh, zero and the zero part, so the left up upper left corner, it's uh, called the true negative. Then that it means that we we predicted that it will be bad, and it's really a bad wine. The bottom right corner is the true positive that it means that we predicted that it will be, be a good wine and it's really a good wine right? and the uh, bottom left and the upper right corner is the our error our failures it's called the this is called the false negative that means that we predicted that it will be bad but really in in the reality it happens to be a good wine or we predicted the opposite, so it's predicted it will be good, but it happens to be a bad wine. This is usually, in this case, the, the worst scenario. But as you see, because it's black, there is nothing here. So uh, the because the the black color is the less value. So we know that our model are really good. In this case, it's one hundred percent accurate. So any wine you put in, mostly you you will know that it's a good wine or a bad wine. But this is really a primitive classification of the wine, bad or good. Usually to reach a good wine level, it's really easy. So that's why it's really easy to, to predict this kind of uh, classification. I just showed you that you can primitivize your solution to earn bigger outcome from it. And uh, this can be useful in a lot of cases when you don't need to know really, really punctually that what you want to uh, to know in the future. And uh, in the end, uh, let's I will show you some different kind of plots uh, also from Seaborn. Uh, these are the box plots, which also visualize the the different quality. The different colors are the different quality value. And you see the the uh, your data uh, based on that uh, quality. What are the range of that uh, uh, different attributes you want to visualize? In this case, I think I visualize the density. Yes, I visualize the density based on the quality. So uh, the, on the y-axis, how dense is your wine and on the excess is, is the qu qualities and you can see the outliers here the, these these are the outliers it's uh, the box the plot is recognize the outliers for you by itself and uh, show your attention that hey hey look after this because these are outliers in the middle this is the median it's not the mean the median it's most useful, by the way, the median in a lot of cases than, than, uh, in, um, than the mean. For example, a really good example that almost every uh, 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 government statistics are using for the salary level mean. And uh, the mean value, it's a, a really, really big uh, trick for the government to rise the average salary because even if the the uh, the mean value of the average so the average salary is high it can be high because there are small amount of people who are earning really really much and the other there is a really big uh, poor uh, uh, cluster in our population but you cannot see it from it but from the median you can because the median considers that relationship but they are not using medians by purpose because usually the median values are more reversed. And as uh, Winston Churchill said that I believe just the statistics, I lied. So um, these are the box plots. The violin plot is is ba ba basically the uh, uh, yeah yeah and forget that that uh, for example the box plots has a different kind of uh, uh, information also in it. So these are the quartiles of our data. So it's distribute your data to four different quartiles. This could be also useful for some kind of analytics. It's quite boring, so I, I wouldn't 
wouldn't make you sleep with that. And uh, the violin plot is the second one, which is uh, uh, basically the same. Same purpose, a little bit less information you can uh, achieve from this plot. And uh, on the right one is the scatter plot. It's called the strip plot. It's main, mainly a scatter plot, but it's you can find with the different color, the different quality uh, uh, um, clusters, quality uh, uh, numbers. So this also, the, while the scatter plot contains just uh, C infor three information, y axis, x axis, and the different uh, data points in your data, this contains also another dimension of information, which is the this color. And uh, at the end, let me show you a really fancy, really, really uh, a Gucci plot for you. And this is the the Plotly library. This, uh, I would like to show you a 3D uh, scatter plot, uh, which is an interactive uh, uh, visualization library. You can, you can uh, uh, see the different axes, sulfates, alcohol, and what is the third one? Uh, density. And the how the different wine in our data are uh, placed in that 3D coordinate system. You can even move into the space and select, okay, this is my wine. I want to know what is this one. So you go in and select this, oh yeah, this is, this is what I wanted to know, so nice. And this, uh, an another friend of mine's wine, and this is also really interesting for me. So I, I uh, use a plot to, to visualize this kind of uh, thing. These interesting, interactive plots can be really interesting also for the children, just because they, they can, uh, it's, it's a little bit like a game to, to uh, they are on control of that plot. They're not just uh, watching it and it's can be more interesting. There are a lot of different option in, in Plotly. This is the only one I showed because maybe this is the most, most easy and easily understandable. But that, there are a, a lot of different nice plots. For example, the, the, um, um, uh, the geographical information. One of my friends, uh, not so far, he developed a, an algorithm which is uh, based on the uh, drone, um, based on drone observation in uh, uh, different, uh, um, how can you say uh, Domborzat in English? Uh, field properties, like how high is it? How high, high is the mountain? Topography, yes. Yeah, topography, sure. topography. Yes, thank thank you. you, thank you very much. Yeah, topography, perfect. So you have uh, uh, hills and and rivers in a in a different topography, and a drone come in, and a bunch of laser everywhere in the field, and these lasers are uh, these laser uh, data how they meet with the uh, with the solid matter, they store it in a data table. And based on this information, they uh, visualize it based on that where exactly on the coordinates is that laser uh, touched uh, uh, solid matter, visualize the topography of that uh, uh, area. So they go through a, a drone, go through a, a land, and tells you what kind of uh, uh, the trees are there, how high is the hill, uh, what kind of rivers are there. And the most mostly uh, crazy is that check you that if the rain is falling, what are the path of the rain? How is it coming down from the, from the uh, uh, mountain and go into the river? And this is the so-called uh, uh, water collection area of the waters. 
or for example, rivers like uh, what are the water collection areas of Danube or something like that? And they can tell you this based on a drone goes and put a bunch of laser on the on the area. And this kind of map uh, making, map reproducing uh, algorithms and softwares are started to get really famous and really, really expensive. And uh, for example, for this kind of uh, uh, solutions, they also use uh, machine learning like or deep learning like algorithms. So yeah, um, is there maybe any question, maybe some topics we, we want to more talk about it, we can, we can go into more uh, details if you want. Um, I would be really happy. Uh, I, I have also interesting stories based on AI, <laughs> like how, how the companies still believe that it's a magic, even it's mathematical solution or this kind of thing. These are the challenges that, that everybody uh, hear the, the terminology AI, everybody is, ooh, that it means that you, you come and we don't need to work more. So yeah, do everything instead of me and 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 after you're like no 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 it's not, not how it's working first we need to map that whether this area or this uh, problem can be at, solved first with uh, with artificial intelligence if it can be solved but maybe there is a more easier solution which which don't require that much of uh, complicity then we don't use this kind of algorithms because we see that it's not worth it so first it's quite expensive uh, on the computation uh, power and second it's also a much more um, complicated work from our our side but but yeah so so um if if you see the there is a, it's a really, really interesting uh, uh, thing. Um, have anybody heard of the term uh, neomorphic uh, computation system? It's the computation, uh, 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 computation power, which is our computer does. It has a processor and based on uh, really easy decision trees like what what i also visualize it selects zero or one this is what your processor is doing basically but it has so much uh, connection and decision uh, 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 trees in that processor that how uh, big is the level of that connection that how much yeah, decision trees uh, is there in your processor that fast will be and that's why in the Intel and, uh, and AMD and this kind of companies are struggling with manufacturing because the, to make small uh, size of, uh, of decision trees in your, in your uh, uh, metal processor, it's really hard. So they are spending a lot for this kind of tools to, to uh, write a little scratch in the metal. And this is why they, they come up with different ideas how to solve this uh, issue. And I'm sure that you heard about the quantum computing, which is based on the ideas that there is no just zero and one, but there is just one place and like a coin. And this one place can be zero or can be one and also can be different in every position. This, this is called the uh, term of the superposition. And the neomorphic computation, which is a 2019 thing or 18 thing, this is where I first meet with this terminology and the uh, uh, Swedish, Swedish university uh, came up with the idea that instead of this kind of uh, zero and one uh, uh, thing, Let's build up a solution where we build up our computation power like the, the neurons in our brain, like the, the morely the, the, um, the neurotransmitters in our brain, like dopamine, serotonin. They have really complicated chemical connections between them. And they replicated this solution in a, in a computational uh, uh, processor like like a processor in your computer 
And this is this happens to be really successful, I, I assume, because the next, next uh, sketch I, I heard about it, it was already the advertisement of Intel. So I'm sure Intel bought that uh, idea from the Swedish uh, uh, university and uh, they already uh, commercializing it. So I don't know, more lean into the, the 2030s, we will meet more with that terminology.